Hey, what's up everybody? This is Austin Haynes with the Waking Justice Project and this is your daily wake-up call. Here's what the corporatocracy is up to today, September 20th, 2019. You can visit our website at wakingjustice.org for more details. Here are the headlines. When oil fields were attacked in Saudi Arabia earlier this week, Yemeni rebels immediately claimed responsibility. And it made sense that it was the Yemeni rebels because U.S.-backed Saudi forces have been bombing Yemen since the Obama administration. According to the UN and independent observers such as Mint Press News, war-torn Yemen is now the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Still, the Saudis immediately blamed Iran, and warning that the world's oil supply is under severe threat, the Saudis called on President Trump to take action. Though Iran emphatically denied any involvement in the attack, President Trump said the U.S. is locked and loaded and ready to respond as soon as the Saudi crown prince gives the go-ahead. Trump's locked and loaded comment and apparent pandering to the Saudi crown prince drew harsh response from critics. More on that in a moment. But first, here's a quick sidebar for you savvy observers of the U.S. corporatocracy. Just last week, days before the bombing of Saudi oil fields, business experts expressed concerns about the current glut of global oil. That oil sales are down, prices are dropping, and the Saudis' role as a global market leader is faltering. Ironically, experts say the oil field bombings will virtually eliminate the current glut of oil. And as oil prices recover, it'll likely restore the Saudis' pole position as the global market leader. Remember, the Saudis and the U.S. corporatocracy have a deal to sell all their oil in U.S. dollars. It's called the petrodollar system. It's why the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency. So this attack on Saudi's oil fields will end up a boon for the Saudis, as well as the petrodollar-backed U.S. corporatocracy. Now back to President Trump. In offering up the U.S. military to defend Saudi oil, Trump drew some harsh criticism from leaders in both parties. Senators Bernie Sanders and Rand Paul both pushed back, saying the president has no constitutional authority to commit our troops to war without congressional approval. War veteran, soldier, and Democratic presidential candidate Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard had the toughest response. Gabbard addressed Trump directly, saying, Mr. President, my fellow service members and I are not your prostitutes. You are not our pimp. The other top Democrats were mostly silent on the prospect of war with Iran, including Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. Biden has been ducking the media, given mounting concerns about his mental fitness. But what about Senator Warren? It's well known that Warren is a defense industry insider, an epic flip-flopper, and quite shifty on foreign policy. So an opinion from Warren on war with Iran would likely be mostly political calculation. Senator Warren is also quite shifty on health care. She now openly supports Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan, which would eliminate private insurance. But Warren adds, quote, I support a lot of plans. What does that mean? It's this kind of doublespeak that's at the heart of a new report on how senators and their family members invest in firms they're supposed to regulate. Senator Warren's daughter, Amelia Warren Tiagi, is co-founder of a health insurance company acquired by United Health Group. It's the largest healthcare company in the world by revenue. So you can understand why a lot of folks don't trust Elizabeth Warren on her healthcare issue, much less the defense industry issues. The Senate report discloses that senators and their family members have invested millions in the various sectors of industry they're supposed to regulate. As former Fed Chairman Paul Volcker admitted in his memoir, the U.S. has become a corporate plutocracy. It was Volcker who was instrumental in the Nixon administration in moving the U.S. dollar off the gold standard to the petrodollar system. Volcker wrote, There is no force on earth that can stand up effectively to the hundreds of millions of dollars in the Washington swamp aimed 
at influencing the legislative and electoral process. Financial regulator and author William Black says Volcker's memoir is an enormous indictment of our current system and a very pessimistic view about whether it's possible to fix it. We're not so pessimistic though. We know that we can't just vote and protest this corporatocracy out of power. But we also know that we hold the power that the corporate elites most fear, mass economic boycott. It was the Tea Party boycott that helped launch the American Revolution. It was Gandhi's salt and textile boycotts that won India their independence from Britain. It was the worker strikes in the 1930s that won Americans the 40-hour work week, overtime pay, and unemployment insurance. It was the bus strikes and restaurant sit-ins by black Americans that won civil rights reforms in the 60s. It was the great boycotts and solid boycotts in the 60s and 70s that won migrant farmers fair wage reforms. And it was the student-led boycotts on college campuses in the 1980s that helped end apartheid in South Africa. We're not saying don't vote and protest. We're saying we must learn from history, wake up to our collective power, and combine our voting with mass targeted boycott. History proves that mass boycott is the only way to force such entrenched and moneyed power to the people's bargaining table. To learn more about the Waking Justice Project, you can visit our website at wakingjustice.org. While you're there, please check out our About page and listen to our first podcast. Let us know what you think. We hope you'll join us. Peace. You must be involved in the struggle for freedom and just justice. Justice is rising and it ain't just us, it's all of us. If it's my love.